This is your auto top off system. Inside is an air bubbler to agitate the water to make sure it doesn't go stagnant and start to stink. Inside is a crate that has a small pump inside of it. And there's also a, an emergency uh, switch on it that if the water goes below the fill line, it won't burn your pump out, it'll stop automatically. I have it set up, hooked up to a timer for the pump so that only during the time of the day when you'll be home will it be on. That way while you're sleeping, it can't flood your tank if for some reason the hose came out of the tank. As you can see, I don't have the hose hooked to nothing right now. Normally you would zip tie this in, just make it go right on the edge into the top of the water, but not down in the water or we'll siphon the water back out down into the tank below. So usually I just kind of zip tie it to one of these wires for like the pump or the heater. But uh, just if that falls out, that's your fail safe. I run this system with two power strips because this one needs to be able to shut off while you're doing your water changes. So this one runs the skimmer and the pump and it will run a power head like a circulating head and then I have it also run uh, the auto top off pump because you don't want it pumping water in when you're trying to take water out when the switches go off. The uh, aerator should be hooked up to always on. So even when this is off, that's always on. On the main thing, I always have a light that's hooked to a timer. And then I have uh, the LED lights for the nighttime moonlight that are on all the time. And then the heater should always be on it all the time. And then the, uh, uh, I always leave the light hooked up for the uh, refugium in the back 24 seven, but it, it can be plugged in to the pump. So it comes on only half the day. It's up to you. This is the controller for the auto top off system. You should never have to do anything with that. If it ever stops working, there's a fuse right here. It's just an automotive fuse, just a low amperage fuse. Normally, if it's not working, just make sure it's not pinched right here or something like that. Or if this is in the water, you'll hear it clicking on and off because it can't shut off. Back here is the sensor for the auto top off. It just kind of sits down straight in and as you can see here are the two switches make sure the wires aren't all wrapped around it like i just did on accident because this top one needs to go up if it gets too full and this one right here falls down if it gets too low so here's the emergency switch here is the regular switch so since i have this on a moving uh, I guess you'd call it a tie. It has to do with when you put it in. Sometimes I like to have my water level on the front of the tank a little higher. Sometimes I like to run it lower. So it really has to do with wherever you want to put this thing for either higher or lower. But you don't want to get the water too high. Otherwise it will leak down the side as you can see. It's a very tight fit to get that sensor through there. But you just kind of wiggle it through until it gets in there. This is the back of the tank right here. This little plug under the light here is where this stray wire goes. It only plugs into it one time. You just push the metal part down when you're done and it'll bend back in place. But you'll need to reassemble that when you're done. This plug right here plugs into the empty one right here into the empty one and that's what lights up the blue lights in there. I keep the air pump on top of a little mat to keep it from vibrating. The pump itself always stays plugged into a voltage that's always turned on. So it's just the switch for the pump, which is this one that says ATO pump. That one gets plugged into the little timer thing. And again, you can plug in 
the cord to the lights in the back of the tank that run the refugium on that same timer if you have like an extension cord to plug into it. In the back here is a uh, filter. See how this has uh, plexiglass? Notice you can push it all the way down or it can come up to the top. This has to do with how high the water level will be in this side and if you're going to see a lip of water here. So you could slow the overflow by pushing, well, you can make it quicker by pushing it down or pulling it up. I normally keep it there. As for the collection, this side here, this is just normal pond filters. But inside this, you might actually see some little critters. They look like little fleas running around in there. Those are called copepods. And that's what a lot of a lot of the fish will eat. So those normally I would just I just lay this like this back here for a day. So they'll kind of fall out. They kind of wiggle their way out, but they're quick. Um, I don't normally keep two in here on top of each other. I just am um, for now. This is called uh, Purigen. Uh, about, you should have another one of these. Uh, that I got that on Amazon. It's for a 100 gallon tank. That needs to go into like a Tupperware container with um, half bleach, half water for like a couple of days. For instance, I have it in this one and it's just sitting there and see how half of it's bleached and half of it isn't. After putting it in bleach, you need to rinse it in water and then use this on it to get the chlorine out of it and rinse it good. Just follow the instructions. A dechlorinator comes in tons of different brands. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a dechlorinator. On the bottom here, this bag is a disgusting bag full of, um, it's called Chemi Pure, Chemi Pure, Chemi Pure Elite. It makes sure it's the elite, not the blue. This takes most of the bacteria out of the water. Notice that this side has a U-shape opening, that side sealed. The sealed side always goes towards the wall because the water flow goes towards that opening. To put this back in, it kind of goes in really snug for a reason, but you just kind of fight it in there until it goes in. Just kind of push it down slowly. Sometimes you got to wiggle it. Just like that. That's called a media basket. These right here are just in case you get it stuck down and you got to pull it out. This right here is called a, a chato basket potato basket, whatever they want to call it. I call it my little farm because I grow pods in it uh, for the mandarin fish and for my six line wrasse. The little light in the back lights up. Now you can see it grows this. That pink stuff is coralline algae. But inside here is a bunch of like little critters. They're, they're, too, they're too fast to see them. Next to this is the skimmer, protein skimmer. This little cup here needs to be cleaned out every three days, usually. To clean it out, I just bring it in the bathroom. Just take off the lid. Inside is all the gross stuff. Come out. What's this thing? And then inside this cup, you have to stick your finger in there. I recommend getting a toothbrush for it. But you clean the inside of the collection cup like that. Just kind of 
Get it on the outside. You can notice I'm washing this with this regular tap on it. That's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect in the collection cup. It just has to be perfect in the cone. And in the cap, you got to scrub out the lid. I use like a scrub brush like this. On the back is the protein skinner skimmer. You'll notice that there's a little clip right here. You just peel up and just kind of push it. And then it just lifts out. This thing right here, you can put airline tubing on, put like a noise reducer if you want. I just leave it wide open. It's noisy, but it gets the job done. This thing right here, uh, turning this knob fine tunes how much foam cuts in that cup. You don't want it to be foaming a lot. You want it just to be kind of a normal, just looks like a kid playing with spit in their mouth and then it just pops over the edge. So just uh, turn that. I just scrubbed this clean recently, so that's why I can see through it. This thing right here slides down. These two clamps will slide down, and then this will open up like a book. And inside, you can take the pump backwards and clean out the impeller and stuff. You're going to want to do that or check it at least once every three months. You gotta fight it in there, so don't, don't be too scared. As for that, notice that I put it in too far and the little air thing went underneath. You just pinch and pull up, and it'll slide up. See? So it just kind of slides up this thing. Over here, sometimes I keep this right here just to kind of silence it. Not necessary. That's also where I keep them to let the critters out when I see a bunch of them in there. Uh, this thing needs to be cleaned out once every three months, probably once every two months. But notice I just took that off of it. It just kind of pops off and then the inside comes out. And you'll see the high door pump right there. So that right there, the impeller right there needs to be cleaned out. See how it already has just a little bit of algae on it. So uh, you can clean it out with a brush or whatever, but as you can see, it just kind of all falls apart. I just kind of have it all kind of pressure together. That way it's easier to pull out. If it starts splash around, you can always put zip ties around the end here around it. It's up to you, but you're not going to want to let this go more than six months. This thing right here is called a diffuser because as the water blows out of it, it'll spin around and then it makes the water ripple in the top. So rinse that out. This will also shoot off sometimes. As for the, the shrimp, they, they will touch your fingers and stuff, so don't, don't think they'll bite or nothing. They're very friendly. These corals right here will grow like weeds. Don't put them anywhere that they can't spread. Uh, that was what I did wrong, so that's why I have so many of them. I have them in a little dish, they'll grow and do a big flower pot in there on their own over time. The other cord back here is just a heater. It's a, just a normal Tetra heater, keeps everything warm. Uh, thermostat, little thing on the side here. Normally it's pretty good, it's a, it's a preset heater. You don't have to really check it. You might want to get a digital heater. Uh, this is um, LG. Thing. I'm sure you know how to use those. Uh, you might want to clean it off every few months. This is the light system. Uh, just wipe it down with a cloth. Um, if it gets salt stuff on it, just use uh, RO water, wash it off. This thing can look like that. These things are, are, are uh, okay. They can get stuff on them, but just clean them out. Uh, the fans back here are not necessary. You really don't even have to plug that in. That was for when I had the uh, glass on it. And the glass it just made a mess of things. It made the tank very hot. So I just took it off for now. And uh, it just held on by zip ties. I know it looks bad, but it looks great in the inside. This thing, the collection cup, needs to be snug on there. Make sure it's not kind of tilted. 
you'll know because you'll see bubbles coming out the side. You'll probably see them coming out in the tank a little bit. Notice the orientation of this coming back and out. There's a little slot on the back of the, um, the hood that that tube can go out of. If you, uh, you can modify the hood if you want. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do it. Just kind of keep an idea of how the, the tube works. This is just for in case you want to go on a vacation. Normally I don't let it get that full, but uh, it's just something for, uh, for emergency. The light can be put on just one of those little simple timer things. Um, otherwise you just unplug it. Uh, I don't normally keep the light on, on the tank more than maybe eight hours a day. And then otherwise I have it ramped down on my regular tanks, but eight hours is more than enough for corals to grow. And then, uh, it kind of keeps the algae growth down. You don't want to have them on too long. Just woke it back up. You can kind of see that thing spinning right there. Uh, agitating the top. It has a lot of air in it right now because I just uh, redid the hose. These guys will go to sleep, as you can see. And then uh, they wake up and start waving their hands. If these guys look like this and you got your light on, that means something might be wrong with your, your uh, water in your tank. So that's what I was talking about. These are telltale uh, if there's something wrong in your tank because these are the most hardy corals out there but right when they wake up because the light was off uh, they should all look like this like they're sleeping and then usually within an hour they're going to be all chirping like birds I'm going to throw in this little tester right here the only the only thing that this is really good for is um, See how it says pH and it goes up to 8.4. You need it, you need your pH about 8.2. So hopefully every time you check it, it's red. Uh, the other thing that's good is free chlorine on here. There's no chlorine on our pumps up in Fremont here. That's always gotta be white. If uh, your tap water that you're treating um, has chlorine from Grand Rapids or something, you gotta use that treatment and that little thing I showed you but basically you just test the water with these little strips. Um, the hardness uh, isn't a big deal. Alkalinity, I think the last time I tested it was up in the, the, the higher, the dark blue. You want kind of like a, a higher alkalinity anyway, but this is kind of not really useful because it's a swimming pool tester. I just wanted it to test chlorine and it was on sale. Little filter pads, I changed one out every three to four days just throw it away of course check it for critters if you see them in there you want to keep those this stuff right here is actually what is called filter floss filter fiber just a little like a little cotton candy pull off of that will work the same as the other stuff if you run out so it's good for an emergency uh, i got you a scrubber uh, this little guy right here is just for, it's easier to get a coral out, um, or dead fish, unfortunately. Um, or just to kind of move rocks around without getting your arm wet. Another, uh, algae scrubber for glass. Got you a net. As for how to get the water change, this whole thing goes in the water. You just put it all into the fish tank and let all the water fill up the hose. And then after it's all in the tank, you put your thumb on the hose and lift it straight up in the air and then down into your bucket and then let go. You don't gotta suck on you don't gotta suck on the end of this. Uh, these are just regular razor blades. If you have a holder, great. Otherwise, just make sure you rinse them with water so they don't rust. Here's that tester. Uh, these are shrimp pellets. That's what the shrimp eat. Otherwise, they uh, get hungry for your corals. So maybe drop a couple in. One, two. Uh, sometimes I use like regular Formula 2 pellets. Um, that stuff's good because that's garlic. kind of keeps uh, sickness away. Um, I use 
Prime Reef Flakes. You get these from Ben at uh, downtown at Watercolors. He'll help you with that. For how I kind of do stuff, I just have a little caddy that I keep um, all little testers in, extra things. I got a quick five-in-one uh, aquarium test kit in case it's, it's just I got to do a quick test. I always do liquid tests. Make sure that uh, ammonia is down and uh, nitrite. Uh, nitrate should always be that kind of color. If it's bright, if it's orange, uh, you might have a problem. That's phosphate though. Um, but just kind of how my setup looks with that. As for dosing, of course I keep a little, a little thing here. Depending on the type of fish you're going to keep. This is just copepod food that I, I just feed them that every once in a while uh, for the corals. Um, if you're going to get corals, you might want to get something called a reef dip. It'll help out with uh, just read the instructions. It keeps parasites and stuff away. I dose with this set right here, Refusion 1, Refusion 2. I do that pretty much once a week if, if I can. Otherwise, uh, you'll notice that your pH will drop uh, to about 7.8 or lower. You want it to be 8.2. This helps. Keeps your calcium up, and that's what grows the corals.